You're listening to the Travel to Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast. Welcome to the Travel to Bosnia and Herzegovina podcast, the podcast that takes you on a journey through one of Europe's most underrated countries. I'm David. I'm Tamara, and we are excited to take you on a journey to this beautiful, heart-shaped country located in the middle of the Western Balkans. Our goal is to introduce you to the fantastic nature, stunning architecture, amazing food, welcoming culture, and complex but interesting history of this much misunderstood country. Through our podcast episodes, we'll be sharing insider tips on where you should go, what you should see, do, and eat when you get here. Whether you're planning a trip or just curious about this hidden gem, we've got you covered. So join us as we explore the beauty and wonder of Bosnia and Herzegovina, one episode at a time. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you would like to support us and the production of future episodes, then please consider maybe giving us a tip or becoming a member of our podcast family. The link to do that is in the show notes for this podcast. Thanks again for listening. We really do appreciate it. Welcome back. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about 10 weird or 10 fun facts about Bosnia and Herzegovina. Now, you don't know what I'm going to be talking about. No, surprise me. Are you worried? No. I'm not going to embarrass you. Hopefully not. Let's <laughs> see what happens. Okay, fine. The first one is that this country, um, I think it was the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina back in the day when it was the former Yugoslavia. Yes. It was one of the one of the republics of the former Yugoslavia. Good. Anyway, back in 1984, how old were you then? Ten. Ten. Back in 1984, this country was the first socialist country to host a Winter Olympic Games. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> in Sarajevo. Um, we have a certificate somewhere that your dad at the time raised some money for it. Yes, he raised some money for it. And I don't know where's the certificate. And he donated the money because they were looking for volunteers. And uh, sorry, I touched the screen. <laughs> yeah, so he donated some money, but I don't know how much. I don't remember, but I'm sure there's a certificate somewhere. Yeah, the party, You've ne seen it. The party needed some money. Because, yes. well, I mean, the country had to, to run it, right? So it does. It's not a cheap thing to run an Olympic Games. No, no. Not at all. So well done, Predrag. Well done to my dad for raising money for the Olympic Games. You see? So, yeah. And if you come to visit us here in Bosnia, you might get to meet the man himself. So that's, that's, yes, that's, that's and, an easy and, one. And if you want to come for a winter vacation, you should definitely go to Jahorina because that's where they have all these slopes. And uh, Jahorina was part of the Olympic Games. And they have a black slope, apparently. The yeah. Um, it's very, very popular. We were in... Cheap compared to anywhere else in Europe. Yeah, some years ago we were on... We were on Yahorina in the winter and we bumped into to some Brits that were doing some introduction to skiing. And the guy there said he'd taken these young men, about six or seven of them, for uh, a 10-day introduction to skiing. And he said at the end of it, they skied down the slope and he called it a super G, which I think is a black slope. I think it's a black slope, yes. Yeah, but Yahorina is, is very brilliant. And it's also children friendly. They have a little slopes for children and they have a, like a ski school for kids. As well, and you can rent the equipment, of course. You don't have to bring your own skis. It's not that sort of ski. They have a ski school. I was going to say, it's not, it's not got Dom Jolly running around with a huge telephone. No. Okay, right. That was before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here we go. You know my pronunciation is rubbish, so I'm going to try this. Okay, fact about Bosnia and Herzegovina, numero zwei. <laughs> numero zwei. Um, Zavidov, Zad, Zavidovici. 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 Right. Zavidovici. That's the next fun fact. Do you know that it has an annual event? I don't know when it actually happens, <clears throat> but and I tried to check it out on the internet, but I couldn't find it. But this is actually true. They have a competition every year for the world's strongest man for blacksmiths. Oh, in Zavidovici. Yeah. Mm. And people, blacksmiths, come from all over the world to this country to show their skills, like, you know, when they make things out of metal, um, and their strength. So, but that's a small what place. What is the strength for? Like, do they pull the rope or what do they do? I don't know. They, they, maybe they lift these big, massive um, anvils, you know, that they bang, that they've mm. smashed their metal on. Mm. I never heard of anything like that. Neither and that, have I. And Zavidovici is, um, 
a small place, isn't it? I know Zavidovich is famous by the stone kugla, like a ball, like a sphere from the back in the day. We have them here as well, we but have, I haven't heard about this. We have one in, in Slatina, don't we? Yes. Yeah. They have this like a weird shaped stone, like a ball stone. That's, that's a proper ball. I've seen yeah, one. That yeah, that's from back in the day long So they time. have those there. But they also have this annual World's Strongest Man for Blacksmiths. I should have known about this before because when Di was with us, we had a guest here, Di Roberts, and he's into these um, Iron Man, mm -hmm. strong man things. And maybe he would have known about it. I don't know. Now, that's number two. Number three. Okay. See if you know about this. Tell me about red pillows. Red pillows. You look surprised. I don't know. You're I looking... have a red sheet on my bed at the moment. <laughs> yeah, but you're looking surprised when yes. I'm. When... Yes, but this is a weird, weird fact about Bosnia and Herzegovina okay, right. that even I am from here, I shouldn't know about it. <laughs> okay. We're going to digress just for a second. Yesterday, <clears throat> before your mum went back to Banja Luka, you were giving her some money and then you went. Uh, into the cupboard to find a dry leaf. Yes, bay leaf. Why did you need uh, a bay leaf for your mother? I needed a bay leaf because they say if you keep a bay leaf in your wallet or your schleipek, it gives you, you're going to be rich, you're going to have money, you're never going to, your, your uh, wallet is <laughs> never going to be empty. That's why. So it's that's, for the good luck for the money. So that's superstition. I don't know what it is, but that's what we do now. Really? Okay, so this is where red pillow's coming to it. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, tying a red pillow to a tree shows unfulfilled desires or love. So if you tie a red pillow to a tree, it will help you find love. Have you? Oh, really? You look quite shocked when I was I saying I've never that. heard of that before. Do you? T if, if you, for example, in love with your neighbour, do you tie that? Is that a sign if you take a red pillow and tie it up around? I don't know, but you've never, heard about, you've never heard about that. No, first uh -huh. time I heard about so it. So there's a weird fact. If anybody fr is listening from Bosnia-Herzegovina, please let us know. There's 101 ways, well, not really, that you can get in contact with us. Um, give us a review or send uh, an email or a DM wherever. There's a WhatsApp number, but whatever. I've never heard anywhere in the world of people tying pillows to trees. No. Okay, here's the next fun fact. You've driven back in the day when you were driving around the country, and me too. When I was a kid. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I used to drive a lot through Dorni Vakuf. Okay. And I thought Dorni Vakuf was just a small place on a junction. Full, <clears throat> fu fully loaded with police cameras. Fully loaded so I got with, the yeah. blue envelope a few times. Yeah, fully <laughs> loaded cameras. with cameras. Um, Dorni Vakuf is famous. For speed cameras. For speed cameras and for having a museum for frogs. I never knew that. And Look, we pass the next time absolutely. when we drive to Montenegro. We're going to go and we see this. By. We're yeah. going to see this. Yeah. Dorni Vakuf has a frog museum. And in there are all things to do with frogs. Also, Sculptures. it's famous by the kupus. They have a lot of cabbage fields. Yeah, they do, Dorni don't they? Vakuf. Yes. Yeah, you just drive in, the, in in whatever season and it's there. But yeah. Dorni Vakuf is famous for having a museum for, for frogs. frogs. Not like in Kotor, Museum for Cats. They have a, yeah, that's true. In Kotor, Montenegro, they have a museum for cats. Um, for cats. So, ne so next time we go past Dorni Vakuf, we must go there and, and take check. some video and some pictures. We can okay. do that when we go to Travnik, maybe. Okay. Yes, why not? Why not? We could do that, can't we? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, and we'll tell you about going to Travnik in another podcast. So that's that. The next one is, there is a town in the country that nobody knew, apparently, for many, many years, that there was an atomic war bunker. Atomic war bunker? In Konitz. We have them everywhere. In Konitz. But we have atomic bunkers everywhere. But this one is a special one. Tito used to make them. Yes. <coughs> Every a big city has one. There's one in Konitz. It's like, a, 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 not a bunker, it's, these are more like a shelters. Yeah. But they are deep, deep in the ground. Well, Konitz has this atomic war bunker... I heard about that. Um, and nobody knew. Well, they must have known, but they say that nobody knew. There's a house, right, in Connex, mm -hmm. and then you go into it, and then you disappear into a bunker underground, which has got a hospital and conference rooms and restaurants. Well, not maybe restaurants, but everything to keep the government of the former Yugoslavia 
safe if, if there was going to be a nuclear attack. How they would get, because Belgrade was the capital back then, right? Yes. How they would have got from Belgrade to Konitz in the time it takes for a missile to fire through the air, I don't know. I but don't anyway, know, maybe it's only met for people from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Well, no, maybe this, they have their own in Serbia. No, that this one, this is where the government was going to go deep in oh, Bosnia. Okay. So if you go to Konitz, um, look for the um, Tito's, Tito's bunker. bunker, and you'll get in there. Right. Hmm. What number are we at? We're coming down to number six. Number six. And Tamara's now going to tell us what this word means <coughs> in her language. Puj. Puj. Yes. Puj is a snail. A snail. Snail. We have a lot here. Do you like snails? I don't eat snails, no. You've never eaten them? No, but, but I never do, do they put you off if you touch them? Do you, do you feel... No, I like them. I, I like snails. We have big I ones. don't like them because they destroy the garden, but I like them... I mean, they, they're nice. I like the one with the house on top more than the naked ones. Oh, the ones with the shell? With the shell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, fine. Well, Bosnia and Herzegovina is home to a very special snail, which is uh, endemic to this country, and they are called Bosnia rainbows. Bosnia rainbows, that's yes. weird. I These never are heard of that. one of the few um, species of snails that are brightly coloured in different colours on their shells or on their houses. Mm, I know there's a one like a black and brown, but they're quite small. These are multicoloured ones. So we have to go and find where the Bosnian mm. rainbows are. When I first read this, I thought Bosnian rainbows. How, how can Bosnia have be special when it comes to rainbows? Because rainbows are everywhere when there's rain, right? Yeah. Or after rain. So are you learning something today? I am. I See, if Tamara's learning something about Bosnia Herzegovina, then I'm you... I'm going to do the search in the garden now and look for the push with the rainbow colours. <laughs> so there we go. Right, so we're doing that. Okay. We're going to go back to museums now. Okay, back to museums. We're going back to museums. What part of the Bosnia? We're going to Doboj. Doboj, okay. Doboj is famous for having <laughs> the Museum of Bread. Museum of Bread, bread in Doboj? Yes. In there, they have bread... Uh, and samples of bread from all over the country, and they show the integral part of bread to the culture of this country. Mm, quite interesting. You never knew that, did you? Yeah, but we are we are quite a we eat a lot of bread in this country. Well, when I first came here, I, my dad he eats bread oh, with everything. I was about to say, and your my dad, uncle, your dad, he just has he would have bread with bread if he could get away with it, wouldn't he? He would, he would indeed. But when I, I first, used to never be a good uh, like a big bread person, only if I'm having a toast or something. But with most of the meals, I don't need the bread actually, because if I have rice, that's my bread. If I have potatoes, that's my bread. But in this country, people eat bread with almost everything, including pasta. I was about to say when I when I first came here. I was quite surprised because I'd never seen a meal that would have like potatoes, pasta, Haven't and rice. Haven't you noticed when you go here to restaurants, they always give you bread? Yes, I know, but I'd never had... No matter what you eat. I'd never had anything... Well, apart from dessert, obviously. Yeah, I'd never had anything which had bread, sorry, uh, potato, rice and pasta all in the same plate. And then people were eating bread with it. I mean, that just for me as a yeah, Brit was like... bread and bread. And bread. <laughs> that was bread on bread. I mean, starch and starch. Yeah, but there's a, if you want to find out more about um, breads when you come to Bosnia, Herzegovina, go to Doboj. And, and Doboj is not far away from Banja Luka. It's about one hour drive from here. Yeah, like and it has a nice castle as well that you can visit. And uh, it's quite unique. It has a mountain as well where people uh, get all these plants. They have a festival there. I don't bear. know the name now. Do they have exactly. bears there as well? They have lots of bears. <laughs> Bosnian bears. I'm drinking British tea if you're wondering what I'm doing at the moment. Okay, we're coming on to number eight now. Dobro, number eight. Now, Bosnia and Herzegovina has, or had... Oh, by the way, how did you hear about these weird facts about Bosnia do before we to, continue? Did you really want me to tell you the truth? <laughs> did you do the, use the chat GPT? I went to chat GPT, <laughs> yes, I knew. <laughs> Well, why not? Did it's, you actually check them out, Mr. Bailey? I did check them out. I did check them out. Oh, I like this one surprised me, but this is, this really is, um, yeah, I'm not going to give it too much away. Ivo Andrich um, used to be an ambassador, a diplomat for, for Yugoslavia. For somebody who doesn't know and listening to this for the first time, Ivo Andrich is a Bosnian writer that was born in Travnik. And it, and it won a Nobel Prize. Yeah. So, so he's it, a writer from this country. And he's famous for a number of books. 
But I would say that the most famous book from Ivo Andrich is The Bridge Over the Drina. Yes. And the Drina is a river that forms the border between Serbia and Bosnia-Herzegovina, yes. correct? Right. Correct. And there's a bridge on it. Yes. Right? And it's the story is about the bridge. But... I think the story is, is described in that book, and you can, I think, buy a book in many but languages But the bridge features now. heavily on it, doesn't it? Yes. Now, I always thought that the book it is about that bridge, but actually, when he was writing it, it wasn't about that bridge. Because in Trebinje, there is the Arslanagic Bridge, uh, which is a really, really cool bridge. It's, like, amazing. And the Arslanagic Bridge was the bridge that inspired Ivo Andrich to write his book, The Bridge on the Drina. He actually writes a life, different generations. Yeah, going through but when, he's, when he was writing... Life. It's a book about life. When he was writing, the bridge that he saw in his mind, in his vision when he was writing, was not the bridge across the Drina. It was the one in Trebinje. Trebinje, yeah. I never knew that. Do you know how how many local people do you think know know that? I, don't know. I mean, it surprised I'm not me. Sure. I did check it out. I'm and surprised it's... that ChatGPT knows about it. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, it only knows up until nineteen, no, twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Because I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to pay. Anyway, we're counting down now. Um, to... Okay, uh, for the Trebinje as well, since we mentioned the town that's in the south of the country in Herzegovina. In Herzegovina. It's a lovely place to visit, very popular within the tourists. The climate is lovely and looks like a little bit like a like a little town on the coast, but it's not. It's very near Montenegro town, Herzegnovi. So it's something to see. It's gorgeous. It has a monasteries. It has a nice, beautiful river going through, and it's really, really nice. Herzegovina is nice. One of the things I didn't un understand as well until I started following some accounts on Instagram is one called Stara Herzegovina, which means old. Herzegovina, and they actually include um, Herzegnovi and even Kotor. They say that those places used to be Herzegovina, mm. but I thought Herzegovina yeah. was only for the country where we live. Obviously, back in the day, it was a bigger region, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it was. It was. Right, two to go. You ready for number nine? Come on, shoot me. <laughs> okay, Bosnian Herzegovina has its own. Unique breed of sheepdog. I think I know that. Go it's on called in. Kjeralica. No, it's called Tornjak. Tornjak, okay. The Tornjak is the uh, is a unique yeah. breed yes, to this country. Yes, it's a huge, huge dog that um, can fight the wolves and protect the sheep. They are huge, aren't they? They are huge, yes. Do people use them as pets or are they only working dogs? Are they suitable for pets? Do you think they have the mentality to be a pet? Mm, I think they do, but th they can be really sometimes, same like with the Sharplaninats type of dog from Macedonia, sometimes they can go crazy and kill their owner. But it's not, it's not very, uh, like, th they are huge dogs, so you need, to be, you need to have a really strong personality, you know, to, 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 to make them house dogs and to obey the rules. Otherwise, they can be uh, really dangerous. You hit the microphone again. I know. Never mind, never mind. Did our neighbour have a Tornyak at one time, did you say? Yes, he did. That was a Tornyak. Because that was huge. Huge, and he kept him in a box, but he, he sh they shouldn't be kept in a box. They should be, you know, but they having are, your property. They can be aggressive enough to yes, take on a wolf. I think they are those type of dogs. They will let you to come in a garden, you know, as, or, or on your property, but they will not let you go out. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> once you're in, you're in. Once you're in, you're in forever. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, the Tornjak. You, uh, it's T-O-R-N-J-A-K, Tornjak. I knew about that, yes. And uh, you, if you want to get some really nice pictures on the internet, you'll see them. They are beautiful dogs. They're huge. huge. Um, I'm not I used to be terrified of dogs, but um, but for the last... How, long, how old is Cooper now? Twelve. So, yeah, so for the last 12 years... I've been a dog-friendly person. Now we've got two. We have the little Dodge. She's like a mix. Mix of terrier, everything. I think, or something. Yeah. She's a proper Dodge. She's a Dodge. She's a Dodge, but she's lovely, Dodge. Okay. She's a good, uh, like a, a... A good guard. Guard dog. Yeah, she makes a lot of noise when people come, which is good for us. So finally... She's like a little bell. Yeah. 
Like a little emergency bell. <laughs> emergency bell. Because nothing can pass through this garden or around the house or upstairs without her noticing. So she always barks, which is good. Good for Gives us. us an yeah, well, we live in a village, Just right? Just in we're case, yeah. yeah. And finally, at number 10, um, we are in one of the few countries in the world that still has herds of wild horses running free, and especially in the area around Livno. Now, we have on occasions driven through the area around Livno. Your aunt is originally from Livno. From Livno. Uh, and when we've driven around there, I think we've seen the herd of horses quite a few times, but we've never really stopped and we've never like wanted to take photographs. I want to go and fly the drone if I can next time and get some pictures. But I was reading an article um, from a photographer that was interested in the wild horses and stopped at the side of the road. It was in autumn, going to winter, and had, um, how do you say, a telephoto lens, mm -hmm. and was photographing them, and said that the, that the photographs were amazing. But what they hadn't realised, they were so focused on taking photographs, that when they turned around, a lot of horses had come behind them, and they were, like, in the middle of this herd, okay. right? One of the horses was nibbling at a backpack, but they were so quiet and they got to take some amazing <clears throat> photography of these wild horses um, and actually saw a couple of horses fighting. So, you know, that's what they do, I suppose, when they get annoyed with each other. But one of the things that you mentioned before and was in this article was, and I turned around and I saw the horses licking the road because we still put salt down in this country to get during rid of the winter, during yes. the winter months and the horses were licking the salt <laughs> uh, off the road now from my research and you can correct me i mean i mean you could spend all day doing this online and prove and disprove things but in this part of the globe um there is only one other country that has um these large herds of wild horses running free, and that is in Mongolia. Mm. So it's just Mongolia and Bosnia and Herzegovina. But I think the sad thing is a lot of local people, although this is now a tourist attraction, people get on four <laughs> by fours and quad bikes yes, to go a, and see them. Yes, there's a quad tours as well, because uh, f I think horses are further down from the road, so you have to take a quad to go and see them, actually. But a lot of the locals don't get it still that these horses actually bring tourism into their area around Livno. So people I think are, they get it now. Uh, but they still look at them now. as they look at them as pests. Yes. And they try to drive the horses away. So I think somebody in Livno has to I don't know you said it's maybe changing now, but it's definitely a it's I think definitely it's a becoming thing. a more touristic touristic place now. I really would like to do a quad bike ride with well I'm not going to drive it myself, but I wouldn't mind sitting on the back. And, and going and... Yeah, we can do them. one in Slatina. Quad bike rides, yeah, but I want to go and see those horses. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, that yeah. They have a package now. I, I'm on a travel agency, Viber Group. So they're going, I think, now in July or something. But yes, you, you, you can do that. And they have an Instagram page. I've seen it, so you can organize yourself and go. Yeah, so... Maybe it's better when it's not too hot. So if, you, if you're interested in that sort of thing, wild horses just going... Wow, like massively running through the uh, through the plateaus down there near Livno. You've got to go and see that. So I think that you scored um, about Ooh. five five out of ten of things five that you knew. <laughs> but I, I'm still quite taken by... The red pillows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm... I'm I, I, I'd like to do it, but I'm worried about the result. <laughs> like like, buy, like buying a red pillow and tying it to a tree. I wonder if anybody come knocking on the door. I know, probably it would. Do you think so? <laughs> yes. Where's that Englishman that's yeah. looking for you, love? But you have me, Jesus Christ. I know. <laughs> do you know that um, living out in, um, in villages like we do here, do you think superstition is more, is taken more seriously than it is like, in Banyaluka in a city, Sarajevo, Banyaluka, No, it's everywhere. I think it's everywhere the same. People believe in things like don't put your, uh, like a handbag on the floor. You're never going to have money. When you see a cat crossing your road, you have to spit three times. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad luck. If you break the mirror, you're going to be seven years like in 
you, you'll have a bad luck for seven years, and I don't know what else. There's so many. Why did your mother throw water over it, uh, par, uh, behind us when we left once? Well, every time when I had exam or when I, you know, had exam at university, my mother used to throw water behind me. That's for a good luck. That's for good luck. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Well, there's 10 fun facts, weird facts about Bosnia and Herzegovina. You have to come to the country to experience these things, look around. And when you do come, and we want you to come, uh, when you see people throwing water after somebody, you'll know what it means now. These are just if, the if ten, you, ten, the most weirdest facts, but there's lots of more oh, facts yeah, about more. this country. And, and and if you're driving through that the country, you can only find out by coming here and experiencing them. Experiencing them. And if you're going through the country and you do see a red pillow tied to a tree, you know what it means. Please let me know straight away. You'll find yourself a wife. Just go knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> she needs a husband <laughs> okay so that's it for this episode um thank you very much indeed uh, for listening thank uh, you very much and leave a review uh wherever you get your podcasts and please do get in touch we'd love to hear from you send us your questions or whatever you like to hear in the future episodes as well so you can send us your questions or email let us know where you live and what is the weird fact of your country where you live. Yeah, we'd like to hear that. Oh, and by the way, uh, in the last episode, which was about craft beer from Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, somebody enjoyed listening to the podcast so much that they've actually become a paid subscriber because we're going to be building out some exclusive stuff not that, that won't be open to the public. So we didn't know the person's name. Thank you very much indeed Thank for that. Thank you very much. I'm not going to read out your email address because there's wacky people that will most probably start sending you all sorts of rubbish but thank you very much indeed and why don't you be like him or her and sign up till next time see you bye for now bye so that's it for this episode subscribe to the travel to bosnia and herzegovina podcast and get ready to fall in love with this heart-shaped country our podcast is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you like this podcast, then please do leave us a review or send us an email. The address is in the show notes, as is our WhatsApp number. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you would like to support us and the production of future episodes, then please consider maybe giving us a tip or becoming a member of our podcast family. The link to do that is in the show notes for this podcast. Thanks again for listening. We really do appreciate it.